Okay. Um, but yeah, we're good to go. Tell us a little bit about who you are, where you're from, what you're doing, how long you've been in what the What am I doing? What am I doing? Oh my word. Who knows what I'm doing lately? <laughs> okay. Okay. So you all, you guys, you, you, I don't say y'all like Kylie. Okay. I'm from the South, but I don't say y'all. <laughs> so anyway, so my name is Heather Scone, Scone like the pastry. And we go with that because my kids say it and it sounds, do I sound like I say stone? stone instead of scone i don't know my kids go with it so you know how like in this business they tell you you got to trademark yourself and i was kind of like yeah. clueless on that i was kind of clueless on that and then scone <laughs> kind of like scone kind of stuck and so it's kind of been my little trademark <laughs> scone like the pastry and if you're stoned apparently you want scone so i don't know it's just all <laughs> <hard. Yeah. laughs> So anyway so kylie um sent me a message and i've been on kylie's team Oh my word, was it Kylie? About four and a half years? Yeah, yeah, easily. <laughs> it's been, a party. Yes, it's been since 2015, um, uh, November 2015 to be exact. I am a kidnapper. I started, so you tell me that you have kidnappers and they don't do anything. You know, you're just talking to the choir there with me because I was a kidnapper. I started for the discount because I had also had a husband that um didn't does anybody else make husbands that like aren't like totally supportive with the business anybody yeah so anyway so my husband he was um he just you know not that he wasn't supportive of me i have an amazing amazing husband but just when they think you're so busy that it's just not gonna work you know what i mean it's too busy and you know direct sales and blah 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 blah, blah. so anyway so that's kind of how this all began Okay, I have the wimpiest lashes ever known to man. So I love the mascara and bada boom, bada bing. That's what we were about was mascara. So now we are, I get a message from Kylie and she says, when you get to a Zoom? Well, she made me like think, oh my word, she knows I'm not on there. Sometimes you know how you can click your face off <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, I'm getting in trouble here. She knows I haven't been on Zoom lately because I've been kind of busy, you know, because we all get busy. And so I thought, okay, uh oh, I'm caught. She's kind of and she's like, uh, no, when are you going to lead a Zoom? And I'm like, holy cannoli, no way, Jose, me? What the heck? Okay, so that's where I want to go with all this, you guys, as I'm nothing. I truly am nothing. I just don't give up. I don't give up, okay? Um, and I am a serial green leader. I'm one of Kylie's serial green leaders. And Seriously, say cereal because I went back even just from January and only one month have I not picked green. So I'm cereal green. Um, and that's, that's been two years. <laughs> that's been two years. So this cereal green girl is about tired of it. <laughs> um, my team is the Makeup Mamas and they are like, uh, they're like my sisters. And I say that with pride because I love, love my makeup mamas. I love every single one of them. They drive me. They make me a better leader. They make me everything. They make me want to get up in the morning and do this thing. And I never was like that before. Was anybody else like that? So here I am, a consistent green leader because I have an amazing team, but I work my booty off too and I show up. So you kind of have to show up too. Kind of crazy, huh? So anyway, so do I show up? Well, I have about $54,000 in personal retail sales. Um, I started for the discount, as I said, and my team, we've hit orange almost twice. The closest we came was last November. We were at $1,900 less. And that was a huge, huge. And also the other month we almost hit orange but it wasn't that close. So it's, it's been, it's been kind of hard, but it's been a learning experience guys. So I wanted to talk to you about consistency because consistency isn't always what we think it is. It isn't always like that the best have to be consistent or that you have to do things. Things like really don't come easy to me. I kind of have to work really, really hard with it. So to be consistent, it's kind of, that's the only option. So when you're consistent, there's things that start happening though, but consistency also is about being consistent with your team and teaching your team how to be duplicatable and teaching your team on how to be consistent too. So, um, 
I have notes here, but I tell you, I probably won't go off my notes because I'm very passionate. And I think that that's the one thing that drives me and my team. My team is very passionate. And I was talking to um, one of the other leaders on my team, Denise. There are so many people on my team that seriously, they're like ready to be green. I'm ready to be orange, purple, black. They're ready to be green. They're ready to be orange, purple, black. We are like fired up like you wouldn't believe, like seriously fired up. But I was talking to her and she was telling me, what was she telling me? She normally always gives me all kinds of good nuggets of advice. You really need somebody in your team that you can actually like just take advice from. Has anybody else ever had problems with me having constructive criticism? Thinking they know what they were doing? Kind of maybe in the business you started that way too, where you thought, hey, I mean, I was a salesperson for a long time. I ran jewelry stores and I thought, oh, I got this. I know what I'm doing, you know? You know, you don't because being a leader and being able in this business is about changing lives, man. It's about changing lives. It's about helping others get to where they want to go. So Kylie, <laughs> she is like, means so much to me. She's become such a good friend of mine. And also she said to me last year, she said to me personal development. And I was like, what's personal development? Because I don't read. <laughs> I never finish a book. I think the only book I've ever finished in my life is the Bible. <laughs> so literally I started doing personal development and it made the world of difference in my whole business and also in my own personal journey. So I definitely encourage you to do personal development and find the one that works with you. I mean, find, find Eric Worre is amazing. I mean, we have, we have so much training at our fingertips, which we didn't have when we first started, even me that served for the discount. I almost think, oh my word, what if I started now for on fire as much as I am? You guys have such a huge opportunity in front of you. We had mascara. <laughs> and, and that's really all we had, right, Kai? I mean, we had mascara and that's all we really had. And it was just like, and we loved the mascara, you know, we didn't have all these videos. It took me, it took me a year to go live. Kylie would try to get me to get my page public. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember that? Yes. I wouldn't you, do it. You've literally grown it. so much. Like, I've just watched this, like, butterfly emerge. <laughs> Aw, yeah. But your team has, too, and you're right. I mean, I don't want to interrupt, but yes, 100%. It's just being coachable, and personal development is giant, because, like, like you talked about finishing the Bible, which is an impressive accomplishment, because it's big. But, you know, it, it's the same thing. Like, you're not going to grow in that relationship if you don't read. And you're not going to grow in this relationship with your team and with your customers if you don't study the industry. So it's so, so, so important. Um, I'd love to watch it now. And the other thing, too, is my team, too, where this will be my third convention. And I used to, when I first went there, you know, I barely knew anybody, but, you know, we were sharing beds together. We were scooting all together and everything like that. And it was kind of crazy that, you know, you're doing this and that you become like so close and you become like, so like, just you grow from each, you know, learning from each other. But I just remember going to convention and just like you had teams, you had teams that were really together. And I really wanted that. I really wanted that. And I used to tell Kylie that all the time. I wish my team was a team, you know? And oh my goodness, you guys keep, keep loving them, keep encouraging them, keep being there for them, supporting them. I seriously am at a point with my career that I want it so much more for them than even me at this point. And that's huge because I mean, I'll, I'll tell you what, when I missed orange the closest time, the last time it was, it was a, it was a huge, it's like an ego dropper right there. You guys, you got to drop the ego at the door because it's kind of an ego. Cause you start thinking that, well, I'm doing all this work. I love, love Sherry Brown. Get yourself some more Sherry Brown where she's like, you don't say you're doing the work because everybody's doing the work. But if you're doing the work and you have the passion and you have it where you're bringing it every day, it's not work. It's your passion. And it's going to, it's going to work for you. Just like those gardens, just like those flowers that are planted, they're going to work for you. Sherry does drop some truth bombs. I love some Sherry. Sherry is amazing. 
Now, a couple of the personal development. Um, I tell you what, Ray Higgins, the, I did the 14-day challenge back in January. I encourage anybody. I mean, even though we do have some phenomenal training in our back office, Ray Higgins just rocked my world, man. Ray Higgins was just spot on where that I like being real and I like being myself. And I couldn't do that. I felt like I felt like I always like had a script from somebody and I couldn't duplicate that because I didn't know how to duplicate that because it wasn't coming from me. So I think the most important thing about being consistent is being yourself. And I'm kind of funny, I guess. So I kind of bring that humor into it and start realizing that what my customers and what my team needs are more important and you know the feature and the benefit but yet also how we can make that work for them so that's kind of the big thing that consistency has taught me so much and i saw a quote the other day i guess it was a memmy or whatever and when you're doing your memmies just make sure add your pretty face to it too or add like a face where that you don't have all your makeup on let people see how you are because people that see how you are I think I get more hits on things when I don't have makeup or I don't look decent or I, I do look like a hot mess because people can be re relate to that. And it's so real it, people want to relate. So I saw this many and I thought, Oh my word, I have to tell you guys that. So stop being jealous of the people in their winning season. You don't know what they lost in their losing season. Now I just want to share with you guys. I shared with a lot of accomplishments that me and my team have had and some disappointments too. But you also didn't hear that I also had some health issues. Um, I had a hysterectomy a couple of years ago, and then I just had a carcinoma removed back a couple of months ago. So actually, I've had some health issues that have gotten in the way too, um, but yet I've still maintained and I still showed up. I mean, I had my surgery and I was still showing up because I knew that if I didn't show up, my my store my front my my facebook page they were i get messages constantly people saying how much that you're being encouraging or that you've made my day or something funny that's that said so know you guys that we're making a difference we really are making a huge difference and sometimes we don't even think we're making the difference because we don't believe it but we are making such a huge huge difference and we just kind of have to just stick with it and stick with being consistent even when we don't want to be. And tacos are amazing. They taste wonderful, but they have all those fillings. And what happens with the taco when all those fillings drop out, you still have a taco, right? Now, I am also a black belt in Taekwondo. I got my black belt. I never thought I would ever. And I did it. And so I like to say that I'm a hard shell taco, not a soft shell taco. And I like to bring that to my team too. So I think consistency, that is amazing to just try to be as consistent as possible. I know you love tacos, Kylie. I don't see anybody's face yet. Did I, did I scare you all off or am I computer literate still? That could be. You didn't scare anybody off. You I got didn't, are you sure? <laughs> I always find people, people put their frozen face on them. Like one girl said she was, or I think it was Victoria said she's giving her kids a bath. Cheryl said, we're still here. A lot of people put their, put their. Okay. Because I am like horribly with, I mean, like computer literacy, like is horrible. Like, it's just like, I love to say what I'm horrible at because I do have a few things I'm good at. So it kind of outweighs the bad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Melinda has her hand raised. Oh, was that an accident? I'm not sure. I don't know if she had a question. Do you guys have questions on consistency or, or what's going on, you know? What's going on with the makeup mamas? We're going to the top, baby. When I hit orange status, here's another thing, you guys, okay? If you guys are going to convention, you guys need to cheer me and my team on because if I have to walk green again, I'm going to really be, I'm going to be, I, I may be crying and I don't cry very easily. <laughs> you got to hit this month then. I know. Either that, well, we'll hit green again. <laughs> yeah. That's something to celebrate. You got big goals. I think 2020 is going to be a good year. Um, 20 is going to rock, but I need to, I need to walk orange this month. I mean, this, this year, I, I can't walk green again. 
Just jump in that parade. You can claim it. I'm jumping in the orange. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I'm missing my $1,900 at .05. That, that uh, what is it? The retail versus wholesale. You guys need to learn about that too because teach your people retail versus wholesale. $1,900. $1,900. <laughs> You know, it's interesting, it, yeah. though. It's interesting because I remember the year where I stayed put when I thought a lot of the people, my peers, had moved forward. And I remember like sitting in the row at convention and my I just had tears streaming down my face. I felt so disappointed in myself. And Chad was kind of like, Kylie, think about it. Like how many people wish they could be where you are. Yeah, and and here you are comparing yourself to these other people. And, and you have to remember that too. You know how many people are like praying for a trip to Unified or, you know, yeah. of course, it's so good to want more. And I think it's time for the makeup mamas to have more. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, I just did a live about this last night in Lash Money about like, I'm ready to take on some like mentees. You know what I mean? Let's do this. I'm sick of you guys not, not being where you want to be. You know, like there's a lot of people in this team that I think are not even living into their potential. Because consistency is, is not just about showing up every day, but it's also about evaluating what we're doing, what's working, and what we can change to make it work better. Um, and I think that's what it's going to come down to. Like I was just saying, like Eric Worre just came on with our company over the past year, and it's going to take time to see the results as we apply his methods. Uh, so the more that we apply what we're learning, we're going to start to see those results unfold as long as we don't give Oh, man, so many people want to give up. Mandy, do you have a question? You can unmute. Uh, yeah, sorry. I'm driving home hey, from the hospital. Hey. Thanks for joining. Hey. Yeah, thanks for sharing. I had to, I jumped on just a couple minutes late, so I wasn't sure if you touched on this. So if you did, then I'm sorry, and I'll go back and watch the, the replay. Um, but what kinds of things do you find like specific things that you're doing consistently, like what does that look like for you, um, like specifically day-to-day -day stuff or every week? What what kinds of things are you doing that you're finding a good result in? Does that make sense? Yeah, consistently, I think that when we went to that training in Michigan and that girl went on there, and always for me, I'm not an analytical person, so it's really hard for me to go through and look at 100 or focus on 100 or 200 people. I'm chunking it down and I'm focusing on 20 people every single day. They're my top people that I'm focusing on that I think are business builders, even if they don't know it yet. I'm really building those relationships, adding those people. And I tell you what, Mandy, those parties, parties are where it's at, man. I, I, I literally cringe with parties sometimes, but I really, when, um, when Kelly Rose, I think it was Kelly Rosa had done the party, the, the 4D, I did a lot of that. I copied and pasted and kind of tweaked it up and started doing a lot of parties and adding those people. And I also like ask people in my group, I do 90% of my sales in my personal, um, group page. So I actually try to really keep that tight where that they add a lot of people to the group. So I ask them, hey, can you just add one person that you think that I can bring value to or that you can that you can share? So I'm really trying to add that and work with my referrals and my customers. Okay. Thank you. And also my team, my team too. I, I mean, my team, um, we work together a lot. Um, my team is not just Heather or has, has team. It's truly, we have so many different leaders on my team that we work together and our strengths really help bring us to where we are every single month and also will help continue bringing everybody else on and also duplicating what we're doing. We're trying to help them duplicate. Sorry to be lengthy. I know you're driving. <laughs> Uh, Sherry said, I can't get anyone who wants to do a party having a hard time with sponsoring. She's having a hard time with sponsoring? Sherry said that, yeah. I've always struggled with sponsoring too, and I'm definitely not the, I'm not the best. I always look at Ashley Chihita, Ch Ch uh, Ashley, yeah. she's awesome at sponsoring, but I've gotten a lot better with sponsoring, with focusing on the 20 people and also looking for business builders. Mm -hmm. I think also by, we used to sell ourselves short with the kit, making it seem like 
we're not what we do. It's easy or hard. Like the other day I had a lady, I wanted to just relax. Okay. I was getting a massage done. I was on, you know, we were at the beach house and I really just wanted to relax, but I just felt drawn to this lady. And I told her, I said, man, I said, I really think you would be awesome at doing what I do. I said, this isn't the right time to talk about it. I really want a massage. I really want to relax, <laughs> but it would be amazing. And she, her and her husband had a restaurant. Um, there were a lot of things about her that she was very, um, seemed very aware of, of wanting to, wanting to make things right and blah, blah, blah. So, um, anyway, to make a long story short, she, um, ended up finding me and signed up. So here she's older. She didn't have Facebook. So I was like, oh my goodness, you know, why do I want to talk to her? You know what I mean? And seriously, how many times do we discount that? Well, here she's been messaging me. She's willing to get on Facebook. She's been watching the trainings. Cause I told her, I said, everything is in your back office. I haven't had a chance to really talk to her yet. She's, uh, she's been letting me know I've been watching the trainings. My kid's coming. I'm so excited. So I think it's very important to not discount sharing what we have. Mm -hmm. You know, we aren't the judge, you know, we have to constantly give that gift to anyone and let people know what it's done for you. And I think encouragement and what, what it's done for just the development of being, being, um, being more, more, um, better leader, being more open to being on lives. Like I shared before, it took me a year. I was terrified to go live. So when people like join me and they go live, I'm like, congratulations, you guys are amazing. You know, mm -hmm. fighting the fear, you know, we got something good. Why discount it? Absolutely. I love that. We aren't the judge. I love that. Um, and honestly, Sherry, too, be careful about the way you speak about your business. I know it sounds cliche, but when the more that we say we can't get anyone to do a party or we're having a hard time, um, it's silly, but our actions reflect our beliefs. So if we, if we say we can't, we actually offer it to less people because we've already believed that they're not going to do it. So as soon as you get one or two no's, you've decided you can't, when really there's thousands of people that you could still be reaching out to. Uh, I realized this about myself this week because I told, um, I told Eric Worry and I told a couple people, we broke into these little small groups and we were talking about obstacles in our business. And I had said that I felt, I remember when I hit the wall of influence and they did the induction ceremony, and somebody had asked me, do you believe that anybody on your team can get here? And I was like, no. And, and the guy was kind of shocked who asked me. And I was like, well, let me rephrase that. I believe they can, but most won't. And the thing is, is there's a lot of truth to that. Most people are not willing to do what I did to get to the wall of influence. It was a team effort, but I worked really hard to build that team in the beginning. And but what I realized is over time, and I talk about this a lot, my beliefs started to shift because I was exposed to so much negativity. Uh, over time, I saw a lot of people quit. I saw a lot of people give up. I saw a lot of people fail. I saw a lot of people that I thought were going to do something amazing that never really tapped into their potential. So because of those negative experiences, I started to tell myself that people on our team weren't getting far anymore, that I didn't have it in me to even sponsor somebody that would hit green. So guess what happened? I stopped heavily sponsoring. I stopped being passionate about offering the opportunity. So my actions reflected my beliefs. So if you start telling yourself more often, you know what? I am going to book five parties this month. No matter what it takes, I'm going to book five parties. And you don't stop until you get those five parties. I guarantee that your actions will reflect that belief. So you'll start to be more focused on, okay, um, reach out to your upline. What are you saying to book parties? Heather, what are you saying? What wording is working for you? What can I do to tweak this? Like brainstorming with your upline or your sideline or a friend of yours in the business and saying, Hey, this is what I said. And, and nobody seemed to respond to it. How do you think I can tweak this and make it better? Because now you're much more focused on the end game. You're going to, you're going to make it happen because you believe if Heather can book parties, this girl knew nothing about social media, right? She says she's illiterate when it comes to computers, then I can do this too. If Kylie could make it here, I can do this too, because what's so special about Kylie? You know, that's what happened for me in the beginning. I untapped that belief 
that if they could, I could too. Mm -hmm. So that is what drove me to black status. But what hindered me was when I started letting other people's lack of activity or other people's lack of that big belief that I had reflect on my own actions. So it's funny, like, I saw something that said, you shouldn't quit church because of the person or because of a person at your church. You didn't start church for that person, you know? And I thought, isn't that true? Like I don't do this business or when I started this business and I started to believe in this business and I started to work toward my goals in this business, I had this big picture in mind, this big vision for myself, for my team, what I wanted out of it. So why would I let one person that doesn't have the same work ethic reflect what I believe about my business? Why would I let one customer or non-customer that doesn't want to try my product make me believe that my product's no good? I know my product's good. Shame mm -hmm. on her for not wanting to try it. I'm going to go find the right people to try it. This person doesn't want to host a party? Okay. There are five more people out there that will. I just have to find them. I just have to talk to enough people. And I thought about this growing up, you know, uh, as Heather was talking, like, that there were, you know, my dad's a pastor. He doesn't drink alcohol at all. Like going out on church outings, we never ever ordered alcohol ever. But guess what? Waiters and waitresses always asked us if we wanted to drink at dinner because they don't know. They're not prejudging. Heather said, don't judge, right? So they're not prejudging what we're going to order with our dinner. And guess what? They didn't go to the bathroom and cry when we said, no, thank you. We're okay. We're going to drink water. Their job was just simply to offer it. Just like a cup of coffee, your job is to offer it. So keep on offering it and remember that there are plenty of people out there that do want what you're offering. You just have to talk to enough people to realize the right ones who want it. And you can't take it too personal either. And Kylie hit the nail on the head. And I think that's made a big difference um, with me personally too, is that I really started thinking, you know, okay, well, if they don't want it, I'm moving on. I'm not going to focus so much on somebody that doesn't want it where I'm not going to like try to sell it to them. I'm going to, I'm going to really <laughs> focus on, you know, like she said, if they don't want the, if they don't want the alcohol and they just want the water, move on then, you know, it's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody else will. And I think it's okay for us to accept ourselves that, we have something good and we are, we are able to offer that. And, and there, you know, and, and something about you got, you got to have your goals. I mean, do you see this orange bracelet I wear? I wear this orange bracelet and I look at it every day and it actually started like chipping. So I got another one. They actually brought it back, gave me another one, which I got to put that one on. But I put that on because that reminds me, it looks, and that's like, that's my goal. You know, when I hit um, the incentive trip, you know, I, I would have that picture up there. I would goal myself how much I needed to do in order to hit that incentive trip. You know, I'm looking at the incentive trip now and I'm like, okay, I need to do this. I need to do this. You know, you got it. You got to believe that you're going to do it. If you believe you're going to do it. And if you say you're going to do it, if you look at the mirror and be like, girl, I am a huge recruiter. I am the best recruiter there. Like they, it's their loss if they're not with me. If you start believing that that's the law of attraction too, people are going to start being like, oh my goodness, this girl's for real. Like she won't get off the page or she's been doing this for a long time. Maybe I need to think about this. And it takes sometimes like 16, 16 times for somebody to see things. So if you're new and you're focusing just on your friends, my friends barely still buy stuff from me. Same, <laughs> it's same. It's crazy. I swear, the people I've known the longest have bought the least. That is for yes. sure. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, get yourself if you're just starting out. Get yourself, you know, kind of like in the, you know, get your ground with your people that are going to support you. But find out from them. Hey. Who else do you know, or who else would you refer to me? Hey, if this isn't your thing, do you know somebody that would like to get paid every three hours? Mm -hmm. You gotta ask. You gotta be able to be okay with saying you got something good, and you gotta believe you can do it because I believe you can do it. Right. Absolutely. And that's the thing. I, like we're changing this belief system, you guys. Eric asked me. He goes, "What if you went into the next year?" Or like over, you know, you started now with the enthusiasm you had back then. Do you think it would change your business? And I was like, a thousand percent, it would change my business. That's why I'm revamping my team page because it's dead, y'all. Like, it's not fun anymore. It's not exciting. People are barely interacting because it's like everybody's belief got shot down or something. So we're, it's like Lash Money 2.0 going to happen up in here. We're ready to make things happen this year. Let's go, girl. 
what if we could do it then with less systems and skills like heather said we had mascara and no idea what we were doing but we had raw enthusiasm so now let's pair that enthusiasm with some systems and some skills and some freaking amazing training from eric himself you guys i saw this man's house last week he did not build this training off of no experience you guys he didn't <laughs> where he is without a ton of experience. You know, I think he rebuilt his network marketing business seven times. Mm -hmm. It's insane to me. Like literally his entire fortune fell apart so many times and he just kept going. And now he sits in probably a $30 million home. I don't even know the price tag on something like that, but not that money's everything, but think of how many people he's helped. But he literally told us, he was like, you guys, I don't need money. Like I'm good. Like I don't need money. He said, but the most selfish per or the most selfish thing a person can say is, I'm good. I'm good where I am. He's like, because my life's mission is to help as many people as I can talk on. And Absolutely. then I want my legacy to live on after that. And I thought, wow, that's kind of where I've been sitting. Like, okay, I'm comfortable. I did way more than I ever imagined, but now I'm not comfortable anymore because I want more people's lives to change the way that mine has and the way that some of the other girls on our team have. And we have a lot to freaking do. Um, so I want to challenge you guys as we head into July, which is right around the corner. Um, July. Yes, it is going to be a big fat sponsoring boom. I oh. want to, I want to challenge you guys to number one, like Heather said, be freaking consistent. Um, tell yourself, I'm bringing in 20 new teammates this month. Shout out from the rooftops. Talk about it on your Facebook lives. Talk it about on talk about it on your page. Tell people like. I'm, I'm bringing on 20 new people that I'm going to train and coach and lead uh, to get to the next level in this business. Uh, let the world know. We're going to take the world by storm. Make people stand back and go, whoa. Like, do you, Chad mentioned it to me today. My, my husband, he was like, do you remember when you guys were like blowing up people's news feeds because you were so excited? I was like, yes, I do. And he was like, I'm telling you, it's almost like people probably think that you guys are old news now. Like you're not blowing them up like you used to. You need to get back to that. Like you need to let the world know that you guys are serious and you're leveling up all over again. So I'm excited about it. It's going to be a, it's going to be a good rest of the year. We're going to have an amazing convention. Yeah. Um, it's Heather, a convention. <laughs> Heather, I remember when you went to convention and you were like rooming with teammates that you had never even really met. We slept in the same bed. I'm yeah. like, I my teeth. She's like, I snore. And I'm like, okay, we'll make it work. You yeah. Know? <laughs> but you, like, that's nerve wracking. And I think so much of what holds us back in this business is nerves. You know, it's like, well, what if? Like, you know, what if I don't have the answers? What if I don't know what to say? What if we don't mesh? What if, who cares? You know, just say yes, tell the convention. world, figure out the details later. Um, the convention, it'll be the go. biggest. To it is not too late. You guys, Orlando Airfare is dirt cheap from pretty much anywhere in the U.S. So get your butts to convention. Make it happen. Find roommates. Sleep on the floor. Whatever it is that you need to do. Bunk together. You know, yes. if you snore, just put the earplugs in. It's all good. Yeah, it's totally good. And then last but not least, don't be afraid. Try to just leave your fear at the door because nothing good happens when you stay fearful and hide back. Um, this is going to be the year of rebirth, you guys. We are going to see a lot of new leaders emerge, but I don't want anybody to be left behind. I'm ready to see Heather and her team hit some massive goals, but I'm ready to see you guys do the same thing. And I truly believe it's possible. Stay consistent, but level up. Like Eric talks about this, plan, do, review, plan, do, review. So consistency, one of the biggest parts about consistency is reviewing what you've done and trying to figure out how you can do it better next time, okay? Consistency is not doing the same exact thing over and over. That's a, a common misconception I think people make because, oh, if I just send the same message 100 mm -hmm. times, I'm bound to get somebody to join. Send 10 messages, evaluate who's responding, how they're responding, and then tweak it a little bit and send the next 10. Still get mm -hmm. to the 100 messages, but keep reviewing what's going to be more effective. Don't be afraid to brainstorm. Get on these calls. Listen to other people's advice, people that have done it better than you, people that, that yeah. have done it more than you, and brainstorm with them and figure out ways that you can work a lot smarter instead of a lot harder. Okay? Fear is a liar. Yes, girl. <laughs> you, know, you know, Kylie, too. I, mean, I, like, I like to share, too, that, yeah, I'm a black belt in Taekwondo, but I used to be terrified to do my, my forms. And if anybody knows how to do, because what would happen is, is that you'd have your peers 
and they would have to, you know, they would have to evaluate you and they would have to like give criticism and you would feel like, oh my goodness, well, what if I'm not doing it completely right? Or what if I'm not completely doing, what if I'm not completely doing, um, you know, it perfect or what have you? That's where the fear lies. And that's why, you know, I live by Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I'm sorry, that's what drives me. That's what fuels me. And that's the reason why I am me is not because I'm not afraid. It's not because I'm not terrified to get on here and talk to you. It's because I have something to say because I'm, I'm doing it through Christ's strength. And, you know, and that's, that's, that's me, you know. So um, my faith. Coffee, coffee definitely before it's talky. I'm a homeschool mom. I really totally, I, I, I think I'm pretty stupid. I mean, I don't know much about computers. I don't really think that I'm adequate as a homeschool mom. So I, I, I doubt these things and doubt is such a liar, okay? You gotta punch it in the face and you gotta say, it's too late. It's, it's, it's you're done, you're done doubt you're done out. I'm going to do it. And I don't care what anybody says. In fact, you don't have to tell anybody, write it on your mirror, talk to yourself about it. If you have to at first, because doubting yourself is going to make you, is going to make you doubt. You got to believe that you can do it. And anything that you do, a white belt is a black belt that never gave up. That's all it is. A black belt is nothing special either. It's just a white belt that never gave up a black status leader started out as a white status leader because they didn't give up. That's all it is. That's all it is. And consistency is if you do not, if it's not working, you change it up until it works. Mm -hmm. 100%. Mandy, do you have another question? Your hand was up, but I don't know if it was just. Um, it was with uh, when Sherry made that comment, I just wanted to kind of give her some encouragement because back in November when it was the Black Friday, you know, bonanza, um, yep. I had like, I really struggled with like putting what I thought people wanted instead of like just asking. And so I really like worked on changing my mindset to say like, no, that like, why would someone say no to this? They want it. Like I literally had to keep telling myself like, no, everyone that I asked, they're going to want to be in this. This is going to like, I had to build it up in my head and I had to believe it. And I ended up having like 80 people in this group. And my goal was like 20. So awesome. I think when you, yeah, man. Like I am a very realistic person. I'm really hard to um, convince me. Like I have dreams, but like they're realistic dreams. They're not like they, they're dreams that are for me. Like, okay, I can do that, you know? And so with something like this, I had to like really train myself to think, like stop putting out what I thought people, how they were going to respond to me. And, um, also going and then also yeah you have dreams but they're realistic dreams what does that mean well like <laughs> what's realistic well for me uh, they're definitely growing now but when I first started I was like <laughs> oh like I could I think I could hit green like I didn't think that I could hit black I was like, y'all, I can't be where Kylie is, but I think I could hit green. Like that was for me, like that was a dream. Like now it's like, no, I can have black. Like I've totally in a year, I mean, it's taken a year for me to really change that mindset. But I really do think when you believe in whatever you're doing, then it's just going to come out. And if you don't focus on the nose, if you're like, I just want to tell everyone about it. And I found that the more I was messaging people, the people that ignored me or said no, I, it didn't bother me because I was going for the yeses. Yes. So I think when you change your mindset, it really does reflect what you're going to get back. And I, like, I think that sounds so hokey because again, I'm like, well, no, I'm the realistic person, you know, <laughs> but it really is that's how it works. <laughs> so it's so true. Want, it is. I, I don't even know who's on or, you know, Sherry's still on here, but I just wanted to kind of give her an, an actual example of 
you know, changing your mindset and then seeing the results from that, you'll totally, you'll see a huge difference. Um, but anyway, so that's all I have to say. Okay, bye. <laughs> I'll, I'll be quiet now. <laughs> You know, Heather, Heather, the month that she hit green, her mindset shifted. Because I actually remember reaching out to her and saying, hey, like, she had, she had been a solid blue for a while. And, and I'm a big believer, like, I like a push, but I don't like it to be unrealistic for that month. I don't want to exhaust a network. I don't want to make it feel almost desperate. Um, it's good to push hard, but if it's just so beyond, like, let's say you're 25% to green on the last day of the month. Okay, let's let's work on that the next month, you know? But Heather had been a solid blue for months where she was, you know, sometimes the team would do seven, seven and a half, eight thousand dollars in sales. So I could see it there. I knew that she was going to be a leader soon. And I remember reaching out to her and saying, hey, what do you think about hitting green this month? And she was like, oh, I don't know about this month. But, you know, maybe soon. And I was like, oh, I think it's this month. <laughs> like, I think it's this month. And we did, you know, we, we worked really hard together, her team and, and they were, but honestly, I watched, I watched the unity form that month that I had not, or she had not experienced before. I honestly didn't know a lot of her teammates before, but oh my gosh, I love these women. And, and honestly, <laughs> it's funny that going into it, of course, like I got something out of it. I wanted her team to hit green. Heather's my personally enrolled. I was, I was excited by that. And I needed her, but she, they needed me too. And this is a thing, they needed like, you. you know, they you scratch my you. back, I'll scratch yours. Like we were working together and, but I got so much more out of that month than just that promotion. And Heather, obviously she was feeling very alone leading up to that. She felt like she had a team, but they didn't really have strong relationships yet. But I've watched that evolve. <laughs> Denise posted a duck. Remember, she hit like every contest. She won like every single one. Yeah. <laughs> she called herself the lucky duck. But it was crazy. That girl, she literally won like three contests that month. But Do you recommend any books? Um, working hard. Yeah. She wants to recommend some books. What Ray you got? Higgins Challenge. <laughs> yeah, the Ray Higdon 14 Day Challenge. Did they close it? I think I don't I don't know I'm in it again man that that changed my life that just helped my me with my lives and helped me like just show up even more every day this morning really good. so he'll do another but I would recommend you can buy it on Amazon it's called freakishly effective uh freakishly hold on freakishly effective help me Cheryl for network for social media hold on Denise is good with books. Refer to Denise. She's good with books. Freakishly. I do more audio because, as I said, I'm a homeschool mom. I'm busy. Yes. Yeah, busy, busy. It's called Freakishly Effective Social Media for Network Marketing. Ray and Jessica Higdon wrote it. Um, what we love about him is he he's like methodical, but it's for social media. So it's what we do. You know what I mean? So I feel like his methods, like, he takes the old school methods, but then he makes them more current with social media. So you'll really like that. I would recommend that book. It's just really smart. Um, and it's an easy read, but depending like where you are in your business, um, all of, I mean, I love Sarah Robbins book. I love Eric Worre's go pro book. Um, it's a little bit old school traditional, but the methods are still applicable. That, um, the Rachel, what's her name? That, um, Rachel Hollis. Alice, I did, I mean, we did, um, I did a book club with her and met a lot of ladies through there. And that was really cool too. I mean, going through her book and, um, doing dream boards and stuff like that. We did that. It was cool. The 10 times rule, Cheryl says, I've heard that. Really good. I've heard that one yet. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm like Heather, I'm not a huge reader. I have to force myself to do it. Mm -hmm. But every time I do, I'm telling you like this book right here, this freakishly effective one, if I read a page, I go into Lash Money and like post what I learned. Like, there's so much good info in it. So if you ever feel like you're struggling with what to say, read something, do some personal development. It'll come to you really quickly. Um, Brendan Bouchard and High Performance Habits. See, Cheryl's all about the books. She lives on the beach, so she's always reading on the beach. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm a beach girl too, but I don't live on the beach all the time. I know. She lives in Boca Raton. Lucky that. Oh, wow. Florida. I, oh. I love it. But Enjoy. thank you guys so much, Heather. Thank you for jumping on here. No problem. Um, Thanks, Kylie. As awesome. always. As uh, always. Uh, 
pushing me to do things that I feel uncomfortable, but you always make me do them. <laughs> because I know you're going to be good at it and you, you slayed it. So thank you so much. You guys join us next week. We have, oh, who do we have next week? I'm not sure if I know yet. Oh, it's a surprise. Oh, July 1st. So it's going to be a sponsoring month. I think corporate has some good surprises in store. So make sure you tune in um, July 1st next week. It's going to be a good one. And that's all I'm about to say, but it's going to be good. Thanks, guys. And love you guys. Thanks, guys. Have a great love night. You. Bye. Bye. Yeah, thank you so much.